That's all we got, guys. That's all we got for music today. We got, I forgot left my hard my hard drive up there in the uh, upstairs before we got everything going. So me and Chris was laughing and saying we're going to do some intro music. <laughs> oh, man. It's never a dull moment on the show. Guys, I want to thank y'all for tuning in to One Objective tonight. Uh, probably some of you guys are tuning in like, what in the world are they laughing about? You have to go back and catch it. But uh, anyways, guys, I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Really do. Uh, sorry it's been so long since we've been able to get online and, and uh, on here and do a show. It's been crazy. Uh, it's been a crazy three to four weeks for sure, uh, just with one objective side of things with business and then, uh, you know, family, stuff like that. And then home projects has been going on. That's just been, it's been really nuts. But Chris, how you doing tonight, man? I, know, I like to say, we ain't been on in a while. How you been doing? Doing all right. Doing pretty good. Had a chance. I know you ain't really had a chance to go out and, and do no fish. Well, we got to talk about the Actac tournament too, because we didn't even, we haven't been on a show since we've done the Actac tournament. No, we tournament. haven't. Uh uh-uh, uh, no. So we haven't been on the show since the Yak Attack tournament. Yeah, well. So we'll discuss that tonight too, as well, yeah. uh, before we go into that. But uh, I want to thank all our sponsors uh, that support this show. We've got a really great group of companies that help us out uh, with our giveaways, with um, you know some products to, uh, to help shoot videos with, and and all that. So I, I just want to thank all the companies that that, that really helped us out. Um, but I want to thank Bonafide Kayaks. Uh, missile baits, Falcon Rods, Bayuno Power, Yak Attack, Native Watercraft, and Acucol and Power Pole. So, uh, guys, please go check them out. They have supported us. They've been great companies. They've done a lot for us. Um, and then, did I say Falcon Rods? I did yeah. say Falcon Rods. Okay. I just seen the background there. It, it, it caught my eye. But, uh, but anyways, guys, I, I want to thank, thank all these sponsors. Please go check them out. Support them because they support us. Um, but... Anyways, let's get on here. Let's talk fishing. Tonight is going to be open mic night. Um, now, that's kind of odd because we don't have a mic for everyone. But Chris is going to be reading the boards. We're going to be going over questions. Uh, we're going to be talking fishing. We're going to be talking, are uh, you seen the night bite? We've gotten a lot of response uh, from our shows that we've done for night fishing. And a lot of people love talking about night fishing. For some, it's it's new. You know, they're, they're just kind of getting into it. Uh, they're starting to learn it. And there's some that's been doing it for a while. And, you know, hopefully maybe some guys uh, that do it a lot, too, can come on here and kind of talk about it. But save those for a little bit until we get into that topic. But, um, but yeah, so we're going to be going over that. Uh, we're also getting to the point where, which smallmouth fishing has been good for a while. Around here, though, the rivers have been blown out so bad. Depends on what part of the country you live in. For us, the James River, um, the New River, you got Shenandoah. All of them really good smallmouth fisheries just have been blown out. Been hard to get on. Um, but I tell you something that, that really, really just gets me is the fact that how many water rescues that have to been that's had to been done in the last two months. I mean, every time you're on Facebook, water rescue in, in Big Island area, water rescue in Glasgow area on the James River. You know, you got New River. They did one Friday? Was it Friday or? Yeah, I don't think that woman made it either. I think no, she. I don't think so. Yeah, or maybe it was earlier this week. I think it was earlier yeah, this week. Sometime this week. And um, I don't know if she had a life vest on or not. I don't know, but you know, we we caught a lot of slack for doing some life vest posts. I mean, some people got really like, really upset about it. You know, like you know, I don't have to wear my life vest. It's my right if I don't want to wear. You're right, guys. I, you know, it's just very important to us. We see a lot of it around the rivers here. People that go just kayaking on a regular basis not really going out fishing, just going with their family and don't have a life vest on and you hear about a drowning, you know, or people go offshore fishing, hear about a drowning. It, it's just so much it can go wrong so quickly. It's always important when you're going to step foot on one of those plastic boats to put your life vest on. I wear a life vest when I run down the lake on my big boat. I also wear a life vest if I'm on a big boat fishing by myself at nighttime or during the day. I wear inflatable. You just never know. You slip and fall and hit your head. That's all it takes. And you know how clumsy I am, Chris. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've been in the water more than once. I've watched you go from the back of the boat to the was it? <laughs> no, it was the front of the boat to the back of the boat into the water. <laughs> yeah, I ran out of real estate, man. Couldn't I couldn't <laughs> catch up and just hit the water. So, I mean, yeah, it doesn't take much to, for anything to happen. Like on a river, it doesn't take much to go down, hit a rock, flip over, boom. There's another rock. You hit your head, or you get sucked into one of the. Uh, 
turbines or tur- the turbulence of the water around them rocks, you know? So it's always good to have one on. But anyways, let's kind of get off of that subject. Like I say, guys, I always wear your life vest when you go out fishing by yourself with family and all that. So, but Chris, let's talk about the Yak Attack Tournament and let's talk. I mean, congratulations, first of all, to Casey Reed, big, big, uh, Big friend of the show, big friend, big friend of ours. Anyways, good friend of ours, and then also Jason Hensley for finishing second in that. Um, you know, he's on the one objective team. He has done really well at that lake. Uh, he lost the opportunity with a big fish to possibly do something. I don't know if he'd have caught Casey. I can't remember what the numbers were, but big congratulations uh, to them two guys there on first and second place on a very hot very hot miserable kind of kind of day really it was hot out oh, there chris was, i mean it was. And, and then the ramp we wanted to put in at it it was so loaded that we couldn't get in there so we didn't even have intentions to paddle that far and we ended up having to go back to the main ramp and paddle all the way back to where we want to paddle to <clears throat> and pedal i used the native in that one and we were worn out but we also we get this harebrained scheme of like hey let's go to the river Let's load these things up, and we're going to go to the river and see if we can throw some fish on the board, some smallmouth, which we knew that some of the big fish I already caught that was going to be hard to catch big smallmouth that size, but we'd put some decent fish on the board. And uh, the river was flowing a little more than than we anticipated, really. The stuff that we wanted to get to, like it's a little island at one point we wanted to get to that point so because you can kind of get out and wade around and fish around and catch some smallmouth and that was underwater so i was like man i did catch a couple little dinks on a spinnerbait but that was we didn't stay there long that was kind of a that was kind of how our our day went uh i, I think i had two blow-ups on a frog chris you had one fish on that come off at the boat yeah i don't remember what was on though oh shaky head yeah yep yeah. and it just spiraled out of control after yeah. that i mean it was big fish everywhere we just couldn't catch them just couldn't and then you got Jason Hensley. He comes on in, boom! He catches one. And he goes down, boom! And catch- yeah. I'm like, dude, what the <laughs> crap? But uh, no, nah, it was fun. It was for a great cause. Um, Luther and them do a really great job doing this event. I wish Chris that you'd have been able to experience the the fellowship though with everybody and how they did the prize packs. You won something. You won a, uh, yeah, won a fifty dollar Yak Attack yeah. card code thing. Yeah, I've already used it. So yeah, well, you got a net and a what net and the uh, panfish portrait oh yeah yeah the camera mount camera yeah. mount. so uh i ended up winning something from um oh gosh what was the name of that company now this is bad i can't even remember the daggone name of the company they make kayak accessories something, as well uh why can't creations I think? or something or yeah what i can't think what it is uh, now lisa he did 18 miles or so on the upper james this weekend in two days 18 miles yeah he, he floated yeah so he floated 18, man that's good said, though he didn't say if he floated and he just said yeah. 18 miles 18 miles. Did you catch anything? That's what I want to know. I mean, yeah. what's the fishing like? I, I We come by and the water looked kind of dingy, so I don't know if it was clearing up any yet, but that was uh, last weekend when I come by there. Um, the water was starting to get – the water looked a little dingy. I could overlook Balcony Falls, and it looked kind of dirty. But it was people down there, man. You could look down there. There's people on the beach down there, and I'm like, God dang. But it, that's it wasn't long after that. Was it Sunday? I think it was. Is when they had to do the search and rescue – on the people when I come through there, they floated Balcony Falls yeah. area. So I don't know, man. Stay safe, people. But anyways, um, but I had a good time. I just wish, like say, you would have been able to go and have the good eats and hanging out, and camping out, and went, went out and fished. It'd have been a blast. But it is what it is. We had a, we all had a good time. We were gonna try to tough it out to eight o'clock. We did. We just come all the way back and went to James River. But we were gonna try to tough it out of Sandy till eight, and we just yeah. Lee says, he, his, Lee says his arm is sore. Nothing to brag about. Landed a few. I got you. I got you. Well, hey, man. At least you didn't zero. You know, yeah. that's <clears throat> that's the main thing. So, Are we going to talk about uh, the lures we're giving away? Or you wanna do that? Oh, yeah. Wanna yeah, we're going to be giving away some baits from RBT Custom Crankbaits. Thank you for reminding me on that, Chris. Chris, what do we got? What do we got? Tell everybody what do we got tonight. Okay, Ron, per run, we have one weedless swing head gym. <sighs> Jim. <laughs> Jim. Weedless swing head swim jig, a skirted Ned rig, and three bags of rubber. Crawls, air crawls, and KW1. 
a weedless weedless gym. Yeah, weedless gym. <laughs> So we're going to be picking uh, a random winner tonight for that. Chris will be picking them. Um, so, you know, kind of stay active in the chat and, and all that because that, that's kind of how he goes around picking, and uh, that's part of the process anyways. <clears throat> I don't know what goes on in Chris's head, how he picks, but Chris has got his own – his own. Uh, I just scroll down and pick pick a random You just name. scroll down and pick a – okay. I okay. thought maybe it was like some kind of magic nope. thing that you do, but okay. Well, hey. Lee says the rig motor on his Black Widow helped him out. The rigged motor. Yeah, he got a rig. He got a rigged motor on there. That's what he said. I, I got you. Yeah. Hey man, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. I mean that's what that's what we was talking about coming up this weekend. We was gonna go fish the James River. Yeah. And I told Chris, I was like, look man, <laughs> we got a good paddle up river, a good ways, a good three miles. And I was like, we might want to put a motor on your boat because me and James have paddled before, and that's why we have motors on our boat yeah. now. So we'll get you set up. Cole Cole Edwards is joining us from Vermont. His first podcast for, from Vermont. Oh yeah. man, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah. We had somebody on the other one that was uh, from uh, Canada or yeah. something. S- hey, Saskatchewan, Canada. Yeah, I think S- that's how you say it. Yeah, Saskatchewan. But uh, <laughs> we had, I don't even know where that's at. I know it's what well, part of Canada? Yeah, it's, that's way on up in like Northern a, California. I mean California. Come on, now. Canada. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to you like that. <laughs> <laughs> But um, <clears throat> but anyway, so let's kind of get into some night fishing. That, I love talking night fishing. Uh, it's a favorite. It's a favorite way of fishing. That uh, me and Chris has done it for many years at the bass boats. <clears throat> I've gotten into it in the last three years uh, kayak, which I'm still doing the same stuff. Cole I'm just, says we talk funny. I guess it's because we're from the south and he's from the north. I guess that's why. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I think is funny? And Cole, you can add you can add to this if you want. How come none of your McDonald's has sweet tea and sausage and gravy biscuits? That's all I want to know. I went up north to New York area, and they don't serve sweet tea, and they don't serve gravy and sausage biscuits. Gravy biscuits at McDonald's. Have you ever, have you ever been up north? No. The they, furthest north I've ever been is <clears throat> Front Royal, Virginia. <clears throat> really? Yeah. Holy moly, man. I thought you'd been further north than that. No. Well, I don't, you know. we got to get you out. We got to take it to Cabela's. Technically, I've been to Fredericksburg. Oh, okay. I went to Joe's Crab Shack in Fredericksburg. So that's that's a little further north. Yeah. Than Front Royal. So, have you ever been to D.C.? No. So you've never been? No. Holy moly! What about West Virginia? Yeah, I've been to West Virginia. I've been to Lewisburg. I've been to Charleston. I bought a car on Char- car in Charleston. Okay, so. But yeah, still. So you ain't. Cole been... says he has no answer for you on that, but we do have the best maple syrup you'll ever have. Oh, I bet you you do. Yeah. I bet you do. I was actually looking up YouTube videos on making maple syrup, and that's where a lot of a lot of the people were from. Was up up north that way. Yeah. So, but anyways, let's kind of get into let's get into the night bite. Um, and guys, y'all y'all are more than welcome to comment, message anything on there you want um, about what you guys like to throw, or if you have any questions on some things that I'm talking about, I like to throw. Now, I do not have one of the baits here because I was trying to go to my tackle. My tackle is a mess right now. Uh, I'm trying to switch over to my other boat and, and get things worked out. One's with my river boat, one's with my lake boat. So I'm trying to just get some things straight and then back and forth to the shop and all that. So river t- boat, lake boat, pond boat. Yeah, we got them all. So, but I'm going to start out with what I like to throw, especially like right before dark. You're kind of getting on the lake and, you know, the sun's still up. You're still fighting a little bit of the tra- boat traffic. So, I try to find, depending on the time, like right now, you can still go into pockets, good creeks, and catch them on secondary points. Um, so there's a couple things I like to throw. One is a, a Zara Spook here. I don't know if y'all can see it like that. A little Zara Spook. It's kind of like a perch color, I guess. I don't even know what they call this color. I've always bought them at Walmart. I always find them at Walmart. Um, this one, Chris, I showed you earlier, is beat all to pieces. Yeah. Most of my topwater baits are beat all to pieces. I've caught a lot of fish off these baits. Um, but this is actually one that I start with right for dark, um, throwing it on mono. Cause like say you want to throw it on mono cause you don't want your line sinking. It messes up the action of this bait. What we got, Chris? Clay wants to know, when do you throw a long arm spinner bait versus a short arm spinner bait? Gold blades or color blades? Most of my, I keep all my spinner baits one, pretty much one size. I have my regular spinner baits, which are like my, uh, booyahs. That's what I call my regular spinner, the four blade spinner bait. Yeah. You know I've thrown that bait for a long time. Yeah. Caught some big fish off that bait. Oh yeah. Uh 
<laughs> I got a funny story about that one. <laughs> I don't know if we can tell that whole story though. I think that one might be colorful. Remember that big one I hung up there and Oh yeah, yeah. right there right there in Indian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I've caught some big I've caught some big fish off that. But I do go to a finesse style spinner bait, which is the Z Man spinner bait, which I was catching them off of the river. Yeah. Um but I always go to my smaller baits when they're chasing smaller bait fish. So like the shad spawns going on, bait fish are a little smaller. You can throw that stuff up on the rocks. Um, and in the river when they're chasing bait fish, you can see the smallmouth way shallow chasing them bait fish up on the bank. Yeah. I'll throw those smaller finesse style baits. Uh, and then I'll get to the bigger baits as the summer goes on. I mean, some of these guys will take huge willow leaf spinner baits, one ounce spinner baits, and go over these points with them, you know, and, and catch them that way. So um, that that's kind of big on that. But kind of getting back towards like, and I have thrown some at nighttime too, big Colorado blades, yeah. you know. Um, but when it comes to blade colors, that's kind of um, that's kind of some different conditions. So if I got a good cloudy condition in clear water, I'll go to some gold gold spinner baits, gold blades, anyways. Yeah. Um, but most of the time I stay with chrome or like, you know, silver, whatever, what people want to call them. And that's mainly what I throw most of the time, unless I'm getting in real dirty water where I throw shallow, yeah. I mean, chartreuse, but. And Rod wants to know, uh, he's wanting to start a three to $400 kayak. Can you recommend the best kayak to buy at that price point? Three to $400. Um, if you could, man, that's really hard because <laughs> it's hard to answer that question because I don't, I don't like pushing people to Walmart kayaks for one it's like Chad Hoover always said, and, and I've heard other people say it too. Buy your second kayak first. I actually used this a couple of times with some people uh, at Bob's Up the Creek Outfitters. I've been up there helping him out a little bit. Um, you know, people come in and want to spend three or four hundred dollars. I get it. I know people have a budget. I understand it, but I always tell people if your budget's four hundred dollars, try to save another month or two if you can, or three months. You know, yeah. find something to sell to make a quick quick buck if you can i know not everybody's in that in that position to do that especially in this day and time or like northern illinois public safety fishing association said find a used one yes exactly you can find a good used kayak and go on facebook marketplace um but just try to stay away from the the walmart style kayaks and let me tell you why the plastic's thinner for one that's why they're getting down to that cheaper price yeah. and it don't take much if you fish a river or anything like that you're going down floating down you go down some some dams they've blown out or work road work they've done nearby and hit a piece of rebar and i've seen it happen it'll cut that boat it'll slice it wide open like a like a knife through butter yeah and then you're sinking uh we've been on the river before and watched people do float trips with walmart boats and some of the cheaper like dick's boats and all that and and sink them too you know it, it doesn't they're, they're two-piece boats a lot of them are two-piece boats they're not really roto molded like what some of these other boats are. That's why the price is there because it's a little more plastic. It's a little more time, but you're getting a good boat. So I always tell people if you can get in the four, let's just say five, let's say 500 up, 500 to about 700 bucks. Feel free to make some great kayaks um, that are in that price range. Now I'm going to tell you right now, good luck with trying to get into a lot of that because the industry is swamped with kayak sales right now. Like for us, which we'll talk about here in a little while, trying to get kayaks. It's been a struggle, man. It's been a struggle to get boats in the shop. Um, I know with Bob, it's been a struggle for him, you know. <clears throat> it's just it's just hard because a lot of the companies are shut down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I say, you can check Facebook Marketplace, you can check your your local uh papers, your ads, you know, like that. Um and see if you can find a good used one to get you going. But I'll it, like I say, it's good to buy a good kayak for your first one. Because you can buy a cheap kayak and get out there, and it's not comfortable, it's not enjoyable, and it can ruin your whole experience yeah. with kayaking. And Northern Illinois says also a lot of them are sit-in, too. They're not sit on top. Yeah. You yep. really don't have a lot of room in them. And, yeah. And if you're a bigger person, it's it doesn't work out well for you either. Like, exactly. Like comment said. And, like, for, for Chris, his first kayak was a bona fide. Um, he spent a little bit more money. You know what I mean? Yeah. But But it made it enjoyable for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know – you go out and you feel comfortable in it. You don't feel like you're going to flip as easy. Um, and you got plenty of storage and room because you're a taller fellow anyway. So yeah. you got plenty of leg room. Yeah, um, I can stretch the foot pegs out and my legs are stretched all the way out. Yeah. So, so it, it's good to it's good to go look around, shop around, hit your local kayak shops up, sit in some of them. Some will let you sit in them. Yeah. Some may not. I don't know. But 
I know Bob, we, we've let we've let people sit them, and, and the ones we were selling down in, in our area, we let people sit them, see what the chair feels like, you know, see if you can be in this thing all day, um, which can still kind of give you, you know, like we had one person, they wanted to buy a kayak because he got in the whole thing tipped to the side. I'm like, well, you're sitting on flat ground. Yeah. Some kayak come to a point on the bottom, you know, so it's not going to sit right. But I um, showed him the video of, uh, I forget who it was, standing on the edge of a bona fide. Oh, Chad Hoover now. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big dude. Yeah. That's a real big dude. And like I say, I've... They're not going to turn over. No. Uh-uh. Unless you jump off, jump on it or something like that. Then they'd probably flip it. But. We needed to shoot a video the day we was in the pool with the 107. Yeah. It had three of us on that yeah, thing. Three of us. The water was coming up to the top, though. I yeah. mean, it was low to water. Yeah. But it dude didn't want it didn't flip that bad. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? We rolled off of it before it flipped. Yeah. So um but yeah, I mean that that's what I would do. I mean, not unless you can go and find you a good used one. Yeah, check Walton it over says really his good. Was, his first one was one twenty seven. It says uh local shops might have a demo or something. Yeah. Or go to a demo day. Yep, yep. You can check demo day out and you can say, Hey man, can I buy this kayak right here? And sometimes they'll cut you a good deal. Well they ha- they'll they'll cut you a better deal than what a new one is, yeah. you know. So check for the demos, check for the last year models. Um, right now, though, like I say, it's really tough. It's really tough to get a, a good boat right now. But um, that's what I would do. I, I would, if your range is three to four hundred dollars, I would save up five to six hundred dollars, and then go find you a decent kayak to start in. Um, but that that's just me, you know. I know everybody's situation is different. Yeah. When it comes to money and work and, and, and all that, so but that's where I'd start at. So. I'm sure if you look around, you might find a used one or something. A used one like that that's a couple years old, you might be able to get. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what, like, you could probably find, like, a used, like, bona fide or something for. Well, I seen a guy the other day selling his whole setup for tackle and all on the, really? bo- on the bona fide page. Good God, man. He <laughs> well, I think he's had a health, health, had a health oh, issue I or got something. You. He had to sell it all. And fully rigged out, I think he wanted 2000 for it. Holy moly, that's not a bad deal, especially when you're getting no. everything. Yeah. I think I mean, he was selling his reels and everything. Whew, man. I don't know if it was one of them dudes, like he had a bad tournament, you know, and you're like, no, he said, screw this, man, I'm done. Yeah, somebody <laughs> made a joke, said that's the, that's the divorce deal. He said, no, that's, I forget what he said he had going on with him, and he couldn't yeah. be able to use it no more. Yeah, that's the thing, too. You'll find, like, especially pedal drive systems, a lot of people do them for a while, use pedal drives, or don't realize they have a knee issue, Yeah. and then they get out there, and they're like, oh, crap, you know, this is yeah. hard on my legs or hip or whatever, you know, yeah. so... But um, but do we got any more questions coming in, Chris? No, we it's everybody chit chatting back and forth. All right. Well, let's kind of let's kind of get back into what I was talking about for night fishing. Lee Star- said he saw the deal also. Oh, the two thousand dollar one. Yeah, yeah. I believe that's what he was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what I say, I like to start out with Zar Spook. I'm going to hit. I'm going to run every secondary point I can in that creek and on the inside and outside of those points uh, with this before it gets dark. Um, but I also have a drop shot on. So if there's docks on those inside those points, on the outside those points, or on those points, I'm going to put a drop shot on the ends of those deep docks. Now, this right here is something that me and Alan, when we used to fish night tournaments a lot together, and me and Chris, that I, we would throw this all night long. And this right here is actually a margarita mutilator uh, in purple color, purplish with some brown and like a little bit of, I don't know, like a little bit darker purple in it. But uh, I'll go with that. And I'll go around and I'll flip some of these docks too with a baby destroyer. Uh, this is candy grass right here. You can also go. I like going more towards the crawl colors this time of the year, uh, which is green pumpkin. And you can take a lot of this stuff and dip in orange into tips. If you look, uh, especially I know Dwayne Lamb. He's uh, he's really good from Catherine's Quarters at catching crawfish in a cage. And he'll take them out, put them on the dock, and he's like, "All right, guys, match your jig," you know. And you can match your jig. A lot of times it's brown with a little bit of orange on the ends, you know. Yeah. So um, that's always good too. You know, if you catch a, catch a bass, especially if you got a bass boat and you see what he coughs up in a live well, you can really match it. But most of the time it's green pumpkin. Yeah, Lee, I think that's what it was too. He had something wrong with his shoulder or something while he was selling his setup. Yeah, so it's health. So he just – Yeah. You got shoulder issues, man. It's hard to fish no, and everything. You can't, you can't cast. Yeah, you can't cast. You can't no. paddle. No. So. I don't know what I would do if I had shoulder issues. I'd probably go crazy. If I couldn't paddle or couldn't fit. You'd have to become a striper fisherman and just troll. Yeah, or just like. But then you still got to set, you got to reel them in. Kayak catfish or something, you know. I just go and get you set the hooks for me, you know. 
Chris, set the hook for me so yeah. I can reel this dude or in. Or invent, uh, invent a hook setting machine where you set the rod on and it yanks the rod. Yeah. Or get one, I tell you what, get one of those uh, skeet throwing machines and turn it sideways. <laughs> yeah. where it'll you hit the button and, hit the button jerk, and it. jerk it and set the rod. <laughs> yeah. That's what you need right there. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about that. Nathan That's good. said, mine's blown. That's an awesome idea. <laughs> <laughs> that is. We gotta get the gears turning on that one tomorrow. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm gonna laugh if something comes. That's when one comes out with that idea, which would be a great idea for handicapped people. You yeah. know what I mean? But um, that is pretty cool though. But you know, so so I like I like to say I like hitting docks, and I'll do that through the night as well. But as it gets dark, it starts getting getting later in the night. The shad, or you start hearing the shad popping, you start hearing fish busting the shad. That's when I move over to the big baits here. This is actually a thunder stick. Uh, I like to take this, but this is actually one I found in the rocks. My other ones are tied on. I couldn't find my box. For... I can't believe the person just left it there. Dude, if you get in a kayak and you're fishing the bank, every once in a while the light will hit right and you'll see something shine. Yeah. Or if you're going up there, say you hang one up. Because you're already, you got to. Unless it floated down there or something from somewhere else. You know, and it know. could have. Well, I don't know. This one I think was further up in there. But another thing you can do too is you get into some of these, uh, like where these boat slips are, these boat houses. Yeah. And you'll see these things hanging on ropes back in there because they couldn't get the bass boat back in there. <laughs> and you'll ease your kayak going back in there and, you know, either cut the hooks to get to get it out the road. As long as the owner don't come out there and try to blame you for doing oh, it. Oh, I know, right? But <laughs> but I have. I found several of these things sitting in rocks. It's, the way you got to fish this bait is you – I've had a lot of people ask me, hey, I can't seem to get nothing on a thunder stick. And my buddy Alan actually is the one that showed me – more how to catch in these fish on the thunder stick is this thing has to be right on the bank so you need to get your kayak or your boat up on the bank and cast down the bank and you want it ticking rocks yeah i mean that's how close you want and man they will demolish it and not to cut you off but chris chris says years ago there was a spring loaded setter oh really yeah we're gonna have to try to look yeah. it up we'll have to look it up see if we can find, yeah. find some pictures of it <laughs> but and I'm just ticking rocks with it, man. And you'll see a lot of the ones that you rescue. That's what I call it. Remember when we used to do that, uh, the bobber? Oh, save the bobber. Save the bobber campaign. Yeah. We went fishing that one time. So we had all these <laughs> bobbers in the boat. That one we went to go save us a fish yeah, on. It Remember? Still had a crappy on it. Or yeah, I couldn't grab it. And yeah. It took off it from me. But, but, anyways, so now we have save the thunderstick campaign going yeah. on. But, We're moving up and. Yeah, we're moving up in, in value now. In value now. Next we'll be saving uh, mega bass. <laughs> yeah, and it could be. There's a lot of people yeah. throwing those. Or the jackals. That's what it is. The jackal yeah, Mikey's and stuff. People, people probably go the extra mile to get one of those. Yeah, to I would. Them. I've walked up in people's yards before, actually. <laughs> Especially at nighttime, like you cast and just totally lose perception of every, where everything's at. And these things go up into bushes. And you're like, ah, oh, crap. So I've walked up on people's banks before <laughs> looking for my bait. Uh, especially like, you know, high dollar baits. But anyways, I like to take these and I'll change the hooks over to triple grips because it ain't nothing but saltwater hooks that come on. Like this one, whoever was throwing us in the rocks might have caught a few fish, but your hookup ratio is crap at nighttime with one of these. But all you're doing is like, say you're taking it out and you got your rod tip low and you're or pointing at the bait and just working it so ever slowly, just, just ticking it. And they'll blow up on that thing like two or three times sometimes before they get it. Or you get it back to the boat after they're blown up and throw it out there again and they'll blow up on it sometimes. But it's you can't half breathe. Like I hold my breath just about as I'm reeling this thing always in because you, it scares the fire out of you. Yeah. It really does. And stripers will chase that dude all the way to the boat and then hit it beside the boat. Huh. And it will, man. It'll frighten you like boosh. You know? <laughs> so... I mean, it is. It's it's a powerful strike. It's a fun bite. But I throw this on braid uh, with the heavy action. Uh, what, what I like to throw it on, actually, I say a heavy action rod. I throw it on a frog and rod, a Jason Christie Falcon frog and rod. It's a heavy action rod. It's got a good a good butt section, a good base there, but it's it's got a faster tip on it. So you can really sling it out there and kind of give them it, that when you do the hook set with braid, it kind of gives them that time to get it in their mouth good you know brandon says or osprey nests osprey nest yeah what are you talking about oh throwing them in osprey yeah. nest yeah i can see who's that who's that brandon, brandon Ocean? Street. yeah <clears throat> clay was, is asking have have we heard of the new jackhammer that's supposed to come out i've seen something about that i haven't seen it has anybody seen any pictures about it because i no. i just heard there was a new jackhammer Cole coming said out. it probably cost fifty dollars i probably will well look what the uh that one jackhammer color was going people were paying like a hundred bucks for that one 
Is that it was like an orange. Is, it, the classic. Yeah, it was an orange color. Yeah, I guess. Because uh, G Man did a video about it, it's talking about why people were, wouldn't know why people was paying that much for them. It's paying a hundred dollars for them on eBay. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. I could see if it baits like. Like a wiggle wart where they got changed over and a different company bought them yeah. and it wasn't the original wiggle wart and people. I mean, I, I have a couple wiggle warts I paid forty bucks for. Yeah. But to be quite honest with you, I've caught more fish on the replica than I have on out. Now it yeah. could be because I don't want to throw that bait as much. I don't it know. It says Brian Thrift has been throwing one with a huge blade on it, but I think the new ones are supposed to be a tungsten head. Well, I thought that's what the, the was the deal with the evergreen ones, anyways. I, I, I mean, James says the tungsten jackhammer is already being sold in Japan. James James Bush or, or no, James, James James Stanley James Stanley oh yeah uh yeah, yeah well fire, then you, fire crawl that's what it was called well then you'll probably be able to get them on Dag on eBay here soon then because they get on there and sell them baits out I used to buy Lucky Crafts on there the G Pops yeah Clay stocked up on them he's got five of them of the orange ones yeah good God man <laughs> man you better put them dudes in a safe somewhere you got yeah. some money sitting on there <laughs> it's like sitting on gold bars right now but. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, well, you know, for instance, uh, another bait that's really good at nighttime that they quit making for some reason was the Jackal um, Mikey. They still make the Mikey Junior, and you can find some on eBay that from Japan. Uh, I think Dwayne Lamb up there at Captain Quarters will get them. Uh, Pro's Choice, I think, might have had a couple at one time. They'll they'll just find them and resell. But man, I mean, they're paying so many people paying fifty, sixty bucks for these baits, you know. But it's a bait just like this size, but it's a three piece, and it does have some crazy action. It's a good bait, yeah. Uh, and I'll actually take that and throw it a lot here, like because the thing about this right here, if you're fishing a, I don't know who that was. Um, oh, he should. He, Chris sent us a picture of that spring loaded casting apparatus. Oh yeah, cool. You can bring that up there, and we can. Sh- okay. You might be able to save oh, it. Don't kick me out of the stream here. Nah, you should be all right. You can exit out the top. Oh, I don't see it now. Scroll it down. Oh, it removed. You removed it. Oh, it did said, it? It said he removed it. Oh, oh. Well, he didn't do that. Well, it did look pretty neat, though. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't have to do that. But anyways, um, this right here will catch a lot of stripers. Yeah. I've caught a lot of stripers. Now, I've caught a few on the Mikey. Yeah. Cole says, fire crawl and hand sanitizer on eBay will make you thousands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because the fire crawl color is a big and hand, yeah i can see i've forgotten about that color dude i remember that was all the rage there for a while then. yeah well we had a guy that fished with us in the bass club and he would always come out and throw some wild color like it's something out like you know everything's like natural looking colors yeah. and you'll throw something i'm like i ain't you, I don't have the heart to say it because he'd be all hyped. Man, look at this new spinnerbait. Was it like neon green and pink or something like that? Well, the fire tiger or fire crawl was like that neon green. It was like green with yellow and some red or pinkish color in it or whatever, yeah. you know. It's like them lures. Or that, black, that, that I mean. That guy I'm sorry. had at the uh, uh, Fishersville show. It was like, one looked like, a, looked like a gorilla or something like that. <laughs> yeah. J- Japan lures that you don't see in this yeah. country. Yeah, he had all kinds of different stuff. I yeah. ended up buying some of those uh, bull shads that were like, the guy like approved to make the replica is in the plastic ones, you know? Yeah. And I paid, I don't know, 20 bucks for it or something like that. But, uh, but I mean, it seemed like a, it seemed, I ain't been able to throw it yet, yeah. but that's something I want to try at nighttime as well. Green top. They sell a lot of those oddball lures like that. Too. They do. They do. Got, they got a lot of those high dollar, like swim baits. They got those in the glass case. So, you know, they're good. Brandon says, look up the Berkeley surge shad. It's a lot like the thunder stick, but it's a joint wake bait. Berkeley Surge Shad? Yeah, Surge. Yeah. surge I had to try that shad. out. I had to try that out for sure and check it out because I like trying all kinds of different baits yeah. at night. But, you know, like say getting back to the Mikey's, I've, I've actually taken the big Mikey's and get a lot of blow-ups on it and they just for some reason do not like it. I'll go back to the Mikey Jr. and get and start hook, getting better hookup ratio. Yeah. So, um, But I also change the hooks on those as well. They got great hooks. They got good sharp hooks. All them Japanese baits got good what hooks. What about the spider lure? Has anybody caught a fish on the spider lure? The one that's made by... <laughs> I know. Uh, uh, Lunker... Was it Lunker? Lunker Hunt. Lunker Hunt, yeah. I don't know. I seen like... Brandon Overstreet had something one day on his Facebook about I don't know if he bought any of them or not, but I I've like seen them at Green Top. That's the only place I've ever seen them. Yeah. Wondering... Did you ever buy any? Did you buy any? No. We need to try to buy some of them. I don't Just want that see. thing in my tackle box. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> I mean, it's like bigger. It's like it's huge. I don't know if I don't, is it, there are any spiders around here that big for fish. You got to the bite. big wolf spiders, I guess. 
I don't even think they're that big. You don't think? I don't know. That one that looked like a goddamn tarantula in my shed one day. Open door kind of frightened me a little bit. I mean, I don't like spiders that much either, but I'm not like teetotally terrified of them until they're crawling on me. But that one in the shed I had the other day looked like a tarantula. It was huge. But I don't know, man. It's funny because they had one that was perch colored, a perch colored spider. (laughs) Match a hatch, man. Yeah, they had a perch colored one and they had like a black and brown one which black and brown would probably yeah. look okay i could see a regular black and brown or brown black. over street spider lure one blow up blow up and it fell apart <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right man you know that you got so many baits out there now when i go to icast and i walk down some of these aisles and i look and they're like hey man come over here and check this bait out and you go over and you look and you're like what in the world is are you thinking like i know people everybody's got these great ideas and and you know, sometimes they just don't fall through. Like we've had some great ideas with, with products and stuff and and then it just doesn't work out right. You know, we don't really release it, but to be able to set up an iCast is thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars to set a booth up just to rent a booth, not even including the inventory you got to bring. Yeah. And get, all your travel down there and what. Yeah. So, I mean, you could, I mean, you could easily wrap $10,000 up yeah. in this show. And some of these people come down here with these great inventions that's going to change the world of fishing. And I'm like, man, did you really sit there and on the... And Chris sit- says now it's a rattlesnake lure. Rattlesnake that's lure. Is that something in the works? I don't know. It might be out. It might be. I have not paid attention to what, like some of this new stuff that's been out there. But but I could see a snake lure over a huge ass... I mean, a huge spider, yeah. you know? But I could see a, I could see a snake lure... Because you see people catch bass that have snakes. Yeah, I guess it would be like a topwater lure. And- yeah. You just pull it across the I bet you that would be pretty good in the river up on smallmouth. I bet you smallmouth eat that up. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, how... He says, yeah, it's a top water, he said. Yeah. That would the be rattlesnake. Pretty... I don't have to look that up. I might I would probably get one of those. Yeah, just to try it. Get one of those for a wooden spider lure. Yeah, we need to get the duck. They still make that? I think so. Yeah. They still Cabela's make that. used to sell one. I don't know who it was made by. It was I little... think it's made by the same people who made the spider thing. It was a little yellow duck. Yeah. Because and... you probably catch a fire out of musky. Yeah. Right now, especially with some of the babies and of stuff. Of course, Brandon says the old tried and true banjo minnow. Yeah. What's the other one? What's the other, uh, the torpedo? Was it? The that was the little helicopter. Pole, the helicopter lure, yeah. Yeah. You can still find those on eBay. Can you? Yeah. What's a banjo? Because you can find the banjo ones too I on eBay. I think they still sell those at Bass Pro Shops. Oh, really? It's on the end cap. Oh, I got you. I got you. I seen one down there. I think it was a Charlotte one time they still had them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for everybody that's tuning in tonight, guys, we're just having kind of open session. We're just kind of shooting a bull, talking bass fishing. We're talking baits with everybody. Uh, we're just we're just having a good time. We're talking night bites. Uh, Chris we, said, look at Greg Blanchard's last video. I guess he was using it. The duck lure? Uh, I guess the snake. The oh, the piece. snake? Yeah. Oh, okay. And we'll Mar- have to check oh, it out. Real quick, Mario wants to know if, uh, where is it at? Oh, any new kayaks coming out? Any new kayaks? Uh yeah. I yeah, can't. Mario said it too. Gray Blanchard did a video on it. I got you. Uh, new kayak wise, I haven't seen a lot on the market. Now, I will say probably here, and I guarantee you, in the next two to three weeks, there will be boats starting. You know, Old Town come out with theirs at the Classic. Yeah. So, not to say it's something that works, something new that's going to come out for it. Maybe they'll have something. Um, Bonafide, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to come with that. You know, I don't know what they got new. I know right now it's so tough for an industry. They can't even keep up. They can't even. They can't even get all the boats out that are going to dealers. I don't even know if they want to come out. Brandon with Brandon says, "How about that minnow with the chip in it that swims by itself?" I did see that. I've never heard of that, but you remember the Chuck Woolery lures? <laughs> yeah. The frog. It was one. It was a frog, and you throw it out there, and it was the little string on it. You tied it to the little string, and when you threw it out there, it would stretch the little string out, and it would be like a little wind up toy. And as you reel it in, it would <laughs> flip around in the water. Yeah. Yeah. We need to go and just like buy some of these lures and just have like a, a YouTube day of like as seen on TV. Yeah, I, they used to sell them at Sportsman, but I haven't seen them in a while, so I don't know if they still sell them or not. I bet you we can find them online. I bet you somebody's got them. Yeah. Somebody bought them. Yeah. That's what we need to do. We need to do a video of as seen on TV old baits. Yeah. So we need to find us some of the helicopter lures. Do you still have some? I had one. James might still have some. James has got a bunch of old kinds of baits and yeah. stuff. I know they still sell the. Somebody's got people sell the kits on eBay. That never yeah, been opened. So we need to get that. We need to get the banjo uh, and some like spider bait. 
Yeah. We need to try some of these other baits, you know what I mean? We could probably go to Green Top. Like I said, they sell all those oddball lures. You could probably find yeah. a plethora of them there just to try them. Yeah. You'd probably spend about 100 bucks and yeah. just different baits. But it would be fun, though, to do like a cool video of just going out trying these, drying these baits, you know? Yeah, like, like Northern Illinois says, to have a tourney, but only use as seen on TV lures. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be pretty fun. You'd have to do it like at a pond or a river or something, you know what I mean? And just like everybody would have to you'd have to check everybody's stuff and just see yeah. like, look this is all you can have yeah tackle gear don't matter just this is this is it so um and uh walton wants to know if you have any plans to do a full rigging video with all your accessories yes uh we are actually going to be releasing a new video for the native slayer max uh that james has got and i think a lot of people are going to like it we get a lot of questions about motor mouse for it it's going to solve a lot of issues people with slayers or natives in general with the Titan and his layer side. And so Rick Richie says Apex Watercraft is supposed to reveal their new kayak soon. Yeah. Carbon fiber fishing kayak. That's Eric Jackson. Uh, I think, it, yeah, Eric Jackson. He's the one who owned Jackson kayaks. Okay. He'll be doing that. But that's going to be an expensive kayak. Oh, for sure. But carbon dude, fiber. But dude, he's always made like, he's like big in the whitewater rafting scene and his son's like really good at it too. Yeah. So, when Jackson was making, well, they still are, but when when he was making like the whitewater stuff, their stuff was kind of high dollar, but it was good. You know, that's yeah. what it was made for. It was made to take the abuse. So, forever. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure it'll be expensive. It'll be a light yeah. kayak for sure. And Lee wants to know what our light setup is at night. Uh, redneck right now. We're kind of redneck. We're actually looking into some other options with. Uh, I can tell you power? what mine is. Mine is went to Walmart, bought one of those little John Boat light kits took two pieces of wood and clamped it to the front handle of my bona fide and that's my that's my navigation lights that's pretty much what mine is and then my anchor lights just the, the yak attack pole light that's on the little the flagpole yeah the busy carbon the busy carbon pro yeah yeah which you can find on one objective just yeah. want to throw that <laughs> i just want to throw that ad in there but uh but yeah yeah so but anyway uh, before before i go uh guys that are just tuning in uh we're just having a good time tonight we ain't been on for a while so we're just kind of on here shooting a bull uh, if you don't mind, share this video, hit the like button, um, and like I say, let us know where you listen from. We like to know where you listen. You guys are listening from. Uh, we know a lot of guys are local here. We got some guys from Vermont. Uh, we had a guy earlier on one of the videos from Canada. I don't know if he's on here tonight or not, but I don't remember his name. Uh, yeah, I don't either. But um, <clears throat> but anyways, just let us know. Share the video. Really greatly appreciate it. Helps out getting more people to see this stuff. So, um. But yeah, when it comes to the night fishing, man, I know we've got so far off the topic, which I don't mind. I had a good time answering questions yeah. and talking here. Um, Thank you, Casey. Casey Reed. Casey Watson. He says, Chris, you're a genius. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he is. He is a genius. Um, but anyways, kind of getting to one more bait here I like to t uh, show people is the old jitterbug. Well, that kind of goes with Chris Cable's question. When was the last time you threw a jitterbug? Oh, well, perfect then. Yeah. Uh, pretty much every time I go night fishing now, I, I throw a jitterbug. Uh, the only thing I do is I take, so you can take these little screws off the bottom and you can put your little snap ring. I put snap rings in there and because the other ones, they got like a little wire here. I mean, a little piece of metal and the hook just kind of goes. And it's like them old cheapo hooks that come on uh, thunder sticks here. And I'll go with uh, mustache triple grips. And I mean, I don't, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it, that bait beat all the pieces it is beat to pieces and it's because i like I say you're hitting rock all that stuff but you don't have issues with stripers now i will say i have not caught giants off of this bait i mean there you're talking two three pounders occasionally a four pounder you know off this bait but i haven't caught giants now they got the bigger jitterbugs oh yeah i've seen them bigger than twice size though. yeah and i thought about getting some of them just trying it you know and just throwing that more but for hookup ratio wise, if you're going fishing, you ain't really worried about you know not a tournament or anything like that. Uh, which you could get numbers on the board quick with something like this, but this bait right here is very hard to beat, especially like I say, just throwing up in the rocks, beating the pieces out of you know beating it up against the rocks. It's a great it's a great bait, uh, and then you just can't go wrong with with a popper. This is a RBT custom crank bait uh, popper. You can go on RBT custom baits uh, on his Facebook page. Get with Ron and get you he's got several different colors he can paint you anything you want pretty much um but like i say i throw if a you popper can imagine it he can paint it yeah yeah pretty much 
Yeah, he's he's really good at painting baits, man. I, I, he's been a great sponsor of the show. Uh, Chris, show the bait the, the baits that we're going to be giving away again for people that's tuning in to. Uh, these are the baits that we're going to be giving away to a random winner tonight uh, for the RBT custom crankbait or custom bait package. So make sure you uh, stay with us. We'll be giving that way tonight, and then we'll get your information. And then Ron will send that right out to yeah. you. Clay so, wants to know who makes the good frog hooks that I can replace my hooks with my hollow belly frogs. Never seen them in stores. Uh, go check out Gamagatu. They make a lot of the replaceable hooks. But I think you either have to go on Tackle Warehouse. Um, most, like your Walmart, stuff like that, is not really going to have a lot of those baits, those hooks. But uh, Tackle Warehouse, I ordered a lot of my tackle from there. We'll have, have a lot of those bait uh, hooks. And you can actually break it down because it goes into technique specific. Yeah. Uh, so you can break it down on what you want on there. So, and plus, if you spend fifty bucks or more, I think you get free shipping. Free shipping and a sticker. Yeah, yeah, get you a sticker. What is it? You spend a hundred bucks or hundred fifty, you get you a free get a, shirt too. You get a free shirt or something like a shirt yeah. or a hat or something. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's where I go. That's where I buy a lot of my terminal tackle now. I, I mean, I'll support local too. You know, I'll, I'll go to Pro Choice or, or Captain's Quarters. Uh, I, I try to support them guys as much as I can. Um, but if I don't have time to run out to those shops, then I'll, I'll order yeah. to there. So, but um, but do we have anything else? Did anybody any other questions come in right uh, now, Chris? Where's everybody? Is anybody talking about where they're listening from? Oh, Mike wants to know if we can talk about the new kayak anchor pole holder. Oh yeah, we can talk about that. Sorry about that, Mike. I, I forgot. I seen your question. And I forgot about it. Yeah, that's actually been Got really talking about other things and yeah, them great ideas. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now, I mean, it's been a great product, man. Um, Chris, you've tested out a lot yeah. with uh, at Smith and at Sandy. Um, you know, it's it's one. Of, I get some, I get some crazy questions about it. Like, hey, man, how's this thing doing the river? Well, I'm going to tell you, not unless you're he man, you're not going to shove it through a rock. No. Um, but if you got rivers where it's sandy bottom, or you you know you pull up on a bank somewhere where you just want to get out, you can shove it down through the sand. And it'll hold you. Um, if you got lakes that are kind of like sandy. Uh, reservoir it's kind of got that muddy bottom you know it works perfect on places like that um and i i also like to use it too because i use a power pole but the thing about a power pole depending on how you're fishing where the wind's at and it does this right here the boat will do that pivot you around so i'll you know i'll shove it like you're bed fishing it's perfect i got the power pole in the back i shove that thing down through the side and now i can flip that fish that boat ain't moving and you've made it Another thing where you could put it on a John boat or a boat that's yeah. got rails on it too, right? Yep. So a lot of you like your crescents, I mean crescents, crest liners, uh, your lows or lo- yeah, lows or um, your G3s, I think your rangers and trackers, your newer ones have that track system inside yeah. of it. So um, that's starting to kind of take off. More and more people are starting to buy them and, and, and use them and, and getting some good feedback from them. We've got a lot of great feedback from the kayak inside of it, you know, just – it's kind of one of the things, guys, that just use your head. I mean, like I say, if you're fishing rock, naturally it's not going to work. No. You know what I mean? Um, people ask me a lot, too, when it comes to uh, the power pole and to, like, a, a manual deploy stick, what do I think about them? Well, I tell people the same thing. If you're fishing sandy or monkey bottom, stuff like that, where you're going to use Did it. say monkey bottom? Did I say monkey? Yeah. Oh, I meant monkey. <laughs> like, <laughs> monkey bottom. <laughs> yeah, like monkey bottom stuff where it's soft. You know, they work great, the, the manual ones. Uh, if you're fishing a river, they're very dangerous, especially these ones that people are putting on the sides of their boats. Because when you put that thing down and your boat is cocked like this, you got water hitting you. Yeah, it could turn you over. It, it makes you unstable. And there has been stories of people flipping boats. Yeah. So Lee says it's going to be his next addition to his Black Widow. Was a power pole, or I guess the uh, stakeout. Oh, the stakeout pole. The stakeout yeah. pole with the holder. Yeah, I think you will like it. And I always tell people, and you know, this ain't me trying to upsell stuff. I always tell people it's good to buy two of them, to have one on each side. Yeah. So depending on where you're at, you take it out, you put it on the other side. Yeah. You know, I mean. But it's up to you. I mean, some people, I mean, you can switch it to the other side quick. It's on track. So yeah. you just take it out and slide it on the side. Um, but for me, I'm always like, man, I'm just going to put two. So I ain't got to switch them while I'm on the water. But, um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think it's it's been great. We got a lot of great feedback from it. We got a few new things that are be, that's going to be coming out. That's why, like, we haven't been on for a while. For one, catching up with orders. It's been the kayaking world, the fishing world has been through the roof right now with uh, sales on 
kayaks on kayak accessories yak attack all of them i talked to them they're going through the same stuff that everybody else is going through just trying to keep stuff in stock and and keeping dealers supplied you know uh that's been a big deal and then like for us it's been it's been tough man to get all uh, people gotta understand it's only two of us right now so uh mike, mike says he'll call, he'll let you convince his wife to buy two to buy two okay yeah well, just, you know, I'll call. Just tell her to put her on the phone. I'll talk to her. Yeah. We'll, we'll try to make it right. <laughs> Not unless she starts calling me names. I don't want to get off the phone. I, can, yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't take that kind of abuse. It hurts my feelings. <laughs> but, uh, but no, so, I mean, we, we got a few things coming out. Uh, like I said, I was trying to tell people, it's only two of us working. So, I'm trying to take care of marketing stuff as well. And on top of helping James build. And then we've, we've been getting installs, man. We've had two installs this week. Uh, of rigged out and we did one on tiktok so if y'all have if y'all don't follow if you if you're on tiktok go follow us one objective um we post a lot of our just you know r- random kayak videos just odd and in stuff on there so man i want to know if you have two would you use both at the same time yeah 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 especially if i'm, I'm sp- bed fishing or like we, we've been getting into cat fishing with them yeah. you pull up somewhere put them both down yeah you're ready to go you know what i mean it keeps your boat from doing all this stuff yeah so uh and i think it's actually better because even if you shove it down in the ground, depending on how far you can shove it down in the ground, if you get a lot of wind, you're going to be doing this stuff anyways. You know what I mean? It's going to, whichever way. So if you got two of them in the ground, it's even better. It's just that much more yeah. stability or uh, anchoring ability. It's like being on a floating dock then. Yeah, it really is. And that's the cool part about it. Because, you know, like people like, well, you know, why don't you just tie a rope to it? You can, but then you're getting further out or it's pulling itself back and forth, yeah. you know, on a rope. So, um, you know... It's whatever floats your boat, shall I say. Yeah. But, um, it's, like I say, it's been pretty good product, and uh, we've been excited about it. And, and it's just so simple, really, you know, on, on how simple it is. and a simple, It's just a simple product. So, um, But, like I say, we do got some stuff coming out for the Native, and we're trying to work out some things. We're, we just got everything straight with being a Crescent dealer. We just had our first load of boats in. So, guys... When more comes in, we'll be talking more about it. Um, if you're into getting into kayaks and, and kayaking and, and, and buying a Crescent, we'll have those in stock. Uh, our shop's down there in Cortland, Virginia. But we're also going to be setting up to do rigging up there. We're going to have a whole storefront set up. That's what we're kind of working into right now. we got a semi-storefront, shall I say. People can come in and buy products if they want. Um, but we're looking at going full-fledged, you know, dealership mode that's what we're looking at right now so we got a lot of things in the works some good things are that are going on behind the scenes right now one objective and you know it's it's been good man we've we've really happy we love we appreciate all the support that we get from everybody it's been awesome and and then just the support in the community as well how much support we've gotten with that it's been great too you know so um but yeah like I said, we got some new stuff coming out. We are got some bigger things coming in to work for one objective. So we'll keep everybody post, you know, tuned on that. Uh, what's going to come with that. So, uh, but anyways, let's kind of, let's switch gears a little bit. We've ended been in and out with night fishing, the night bite. So if anybody's got any questions for that, let me know. If you got any more questions, let me know. I'd love to answer as many of them as we can tonight. Uh, we got anything else coming in, Chris? What's, what are people talking about? People on Chit chatting back and forth. Please. Yeah. Anything important? I think we need to dress. Well, I mean, I guess it's important to them. Yeah, but yeah. They're not asking us nothing. Either. I got you. Just chatting with one another. Chatting with one another. I got you. Casey, that sounds good. Casey Reed says hello. What's going on, Casey? I seen you was catching some big old. I seen you catch a big old chain pickerel. I don't know if that was today or the other day when you had that video up. So, I was actually going to work on getting, trying to get him in here today on this show and talk about it. And time got away from me and just didn't even didn't bother to, to ask him then but i will be getting you back on the show in here casey enjoy having casey in studio uh we don't get many in studio guests yeah. so we always had casey reed and jason hensley so uh, but we're planning a fishing trip next week if i can keep james here sunday maybe we'll have james in studio yeah that'd be special that'd be epic so but hopefully we'll see i don't know but uh but something else I'd like to know more of, too, from our listeners, since we got you guys uh, kind of on here talking and chit-chatting, is what are some topics you guys would like to hear about? You know, what are what are some things that's out there that we don't really discuss? 
uh, that you guys would like to know more about or go in depth about. Casey uh, said yesterday, hopefully some big bass tonight. Oh, he's out fishing tonight. He's probably listening to the show. Actually, he's probably on his boat listening. Right yeah, now. <laughs> lucky dog. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, good luck to you, man. I know he's gonna, he always catches some big fish, so hopefully he'll catch some good ones tonight. But but you know what are what are some things you guys want want to hear about? What are some pros you guys want to hear from? Uh, whether it's the MLF, where it's bass. Uh, FLW, also the kayak inside. I mean, there's so many great guys out there in the kayak inside. Who are some guys you'd like to listen, hear from that, that that you haven't seen on our show or heard on our show? Um, and then also kind of getting into videos. You know, when we're doing our YouTube stuff, do you guys like to see more of the setup setup the setup videos, or do you guys want to see more just on the water fishing? Because you know, we do we we get that sometimes. People are like, man, y'all don't even fish. We do. But we spend more time rigging boats. <laughs> Clay wants to know if we would pick the Lose LFS ninety nine dollar reel or the Shimano six or the Daiwa Tatula one hundred. Well, that Tatula, you're you're spending a little bit more money. Uh, the Lose, Lose are good rock, rigged reels. I've had uh, a couple Lose before. I, I'm all Abu Garcia now. Every once in a while, I'll take and go try a new reel. Like I tried the Cast Kings reels, which they were okay, but I think I got the cheaper model. So when I first got them. When you when you'd cast them, it sounded like a bobcat squalling in the woods. You know oh, what I mean? <laughs> That's what it did. I was like, God dang. Casey says he'll come on anytime. He's about to head to the lake now. All right. Well, good luck to you, man. And Casey Watson says it'd be awesome to get the entire team in studio. Entire team. Woo. That would be good. I would like to get the whole team in here one time. I don't know how we'd do it. We'd have to buy some more mics. Yeah, some more mics and uh, some chairs. It'd be me, you, James. Yeah, it'd be me, you, James, Casey, Jason. Yeah, Scylla. Scylla. That wouldn't be bad. And James Sarton. But James Sarton's down in Florida way, so I don't yeah. think it'd be hard to get him we in here. You'd have to Skype him in. Yeah. He didn't want to come up here. Yeah. But that would be a good, fun, like, round table yeah. kind of show. But I think it would probably be easier to have just, like, three three people there and then just kind of do a, you know, yeah. a show that way. And then just Skype the other ones in. Yeah. Just put the cameras over there. Yeah. That would be fun. That'd be fun to do Places something like that. have a show about ledge season baits. Ledge season baits. So yeah. you want to talk more about the ledge fishing? Yeah. Kind of like we used to do with old Rocky Bees. Yeah. The old Rock Bluffs there. Yeah. That's what we used to call them, Rocky Bees. I mean, we had a we, we had, had a name had a for every for spot. Every, every place that we went. Old Snake Bank yeah. had that. The Junk Bank. What was it? The Junk Dock we had or something like that? What was that one? Had the skip guy, Dock. We had to Skip Dock. Skip Dock. Consecutive Dock. Yeah. I've caught consecutive fish off of it. <laughs> Like back to back to back, and it's become consecutive. Doc, it's Betty and Bex, but everybody knows where that's. Yeah, about. but I had one. Remember, it was one dock. It was like we called it the junk dock or junk bank. It was a guy had a bunch of junk up on the bank. I mean, it looked like no, it was junk dock because the dock was about to fall in the water. That's true too. Remember, yeah, I don't remember what was that though. Yeah, does everybody else? That's what I like. To know. Does everybody else have like spots like that that they name? Like everybody's got creek names. You know, what I mean, yeah. you got creek names, but like. For me and Chris, it's our code. You know, man, I caught him off a snake bank the other yeah, day, man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's just because I seen a bunch of snakes on that bank one day. Yeah, I don't know if they all hatched then or or just started swimming it. I don't know, but it was a bunch That'd of snakes. That'd probably been a good place to have the rattlesnake lure back then. There you go. But they didn't have it back in though. Yeah, but it might be a good spot to yeah to have it because I'm sure they still come Golden there. Golden Illinois says kayak rigging tips and tricks. Yeah. Yeah, keep them coming. I, li- I like we like having ideas, you know. And then if you don't get them here, also you can go on one uh, our one objective Facebook page, which is where you're at right now, and message us or email us, you know, any of that stuff. So uh, we've also had people wanting to talk about electronics. They wanted a whole show on electronics, which we did one with. And man, it's gonna slip my mind right now. It was a Garmin Pro, and I can't think of his name now, but he's Elite Series Pro. Yeah. Man, it just it just messed with me. Lee says Shimano Stradic, best on the market in his opinion. Shimano makes good reels, for real. Mario says 90% of his reels is ars- real arsenal is Cast King. Yeah. Not, like I say, I got two Cast Kings. They're okay. I just, I don't know. I'm so used to Abu Garcia that I think I Christina just. Christina says the Tatula is fire. Christina who? I can't say her last name. Oh. Volp. Volp. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Yeah. Volpe. Yeah. Christina Volpe. Dirty Outdoors. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, Christina? Appreciate you guys uh, tuning in tonight. Mike says, the biggest question I keep seeing in the kayak forums is how they so- should set up their new kayaks. Yeah, and that's and that, we're actually working on a video right now uh, that I, I've been I've been taking down notes on how I want to do it is 
um, picking the perfect kayak and rigging out the kayak on how you like to fish. Because you can overdo a kayak. You can make it so rigged out that it takes you an hour to get in the water. It takes you an hour when you get out of the water. You know, like, you don't want that. Yeah. Especially getting new in the kayak. You don't want it so complicated that it's it's just a lot of work to do. So um, that's why I think, like, now that we sell the Crescent stuff, that's a great kayak to get people into it. And some people still fish bigger tournaments with it, but yeah. I think it's a great kayak to get people into because it it's so simple. Yeah. You can't load it down with a pile of stuff. Man, that, them natives out there, man, we can load them. You know, I load oh, mine yeah. down. You can really load one of them down. And a bona fide you can load down. I mean, I, I got one sitting out there right now that is loaded down with stuff. But I think you can overdo it, too, as well. So mm-hmm. we're going to do a couple simple videos on some simple rigs and also some simple uh, and some more complex rigs. You know, Brandon said he would love a show on the difference in the approach and bait selection of just catching numbers and catching size. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be a good show. Yeah. I'll 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 keep that in my memory. Christina bound. says each of your staff members should do a, should post videos of their setups. Yeah. That'd be good too. Just kinda everybody because Jason's got a good setup. Yeah. Get you get you we need to get you your setup. We need to do a little video on your setup yeah. sometime. Yours is pretty simple, but you're still building it though. You yeah. know what I mean? You add a little bit here and there yeah. and you know you didn't go like crazy and buy six hundred dollars worth of stuff or thousand dollars worth of stuff, yeah. you know? But you keep your simple too because you're fish the rivers a lot as well. And you yeah. don't want it so complex because if you do flip it over that you can really tear it all to pieces yeah. and lose a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. So uh and and then also if you don't want to take a lot of that stuff. So yeah. but <clears throat> Cole says electronics and graphs. Yeah. I think at, we've get a lot of that. I need to I need to set something up with some some of these guys from different graph companies. Mm-hmm. And, and Casey, to be honest with you, Casey would be a good one to have on the show because he's really good with that hummingbird. Yeah, he's real good with that, and 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 being able to to set it up and and he's learned it. He spent some time with it. Yeah, and that's what I always tell people too with the graph. Like you just got a Garmin for yours. Uh, well, yours is stri- what was your Striker Striker Seven SV. Yeah, and just you you were out there on Sandy, and that was your first time with it, you know. So yeah. just kind of learning it and setting it up and changing your adjustments and stuff like that. So places have a show about older baits that that you still use. Once yeah. they come out only at tournament time. Well, that I, I'll be honest with you that <laughs> that's a lot about what I got right here when it comes to my thunder stick and my my jitterbug here. That's like that's my. Chris my, says my lake Walmart Cove. Everyone in there fishing. What's that? Oh, on the Walmart lake, Cove. On his lake. He has a Walmart Cove. <laughs> we need to name one of those too. We need a Walmart Cove. That's like the state park down there. Yeah, that would be our Walmart Cove. State yeah. Park. Because every time before tournament time or like blast off and at the end of the day, you're like, man, I'm going to go, let's go back to State Park see if we can catch one more little dink to finish out a limit or yeah. something. And then you go in there and it's like 25 boats. Everybody yeah. in the flip the same Everybody's tree. Everybody's trying to get that kicker. Yeah. <laughs> God dang. So, but, uh, but yeah. Now, we like I say, we're going to get some more things in the work. Sorry, it's been a while. It's been Mike t- says he don't believe you. What's that? That you have all your lures there for. I mean, to be honest, I mean, Chris, he. he <laughs> Don't get me wrong. There's a bait every once in a while that you don't want to show out. You know what I mean? But for in all honesty, I mean, Chris, he's watching me. We fish tournaments together pretty much throw most of these baits right here. This is what I throw. Yeah. On the most part. I mean, every once in a while, I might have another bait, like a jig or something. Don't, I don't share too much. But my jigs ain't really complex either. They're just like green pumpkin or brown. I don't I don't go too crazy. Peanut butter and jelly. I've actually cut out a lot of my crazy color stuff and just kind of stay with the simple stuff now. So, yeah. It gets too complex. It gets too. It gets too uh, uh, confusing. I mean, you look. You see my box out there now. I got so much stuff there that I can't even find half the stuff I'm looking for anymore. So now that I've gotten into the kayak inside, I've actually downgraded a lot of my baits or my collection, shall I say? Yeah. Stuff's going to thirty six hundred. Some stuff are in thirty seven hundred. I can do more thirty seven hundred stuff in the um, Titan now because of a new product that we got coming out which I can't share about that right now, but I do have a video game come out for that, um, that we're going to be releasing for the Titan. So it gives us the ability to, to use a couple more 3700s in there. So I'll let people's mind go wild on that, but more likely it's not going to be what they think it is. But what's Chris, everybody else Chris saying? Chris said he got a Pacifican Spark Pro reel. I if I said that right. Oh, I think they're the ones that's on, I think, uh, TikTok a lot and all that. Says he likes it. He enjoys it. Awesome reel. 
Yeah, I see they they've starting to come kind of a big company there. Yeah. I've seen a lot more of their stuff out. I know who he's talking about, yeah. Um but yeah, yeah. Well what's everybody else saying, Chris? What we got Mike going says, on? Never too much yak attack. No. And Christina says, Yeah, rigging for beginners because there are a ton of new kayak anglers on the water this year. The industry has exploded. Yes. Yes, it has. And Northern Illinois says, I'd like to see more safety videos for guys showing them how to upright a flip kayak and how to get back one, onto one in deep water. Dude, we got to get it in the pool. The, the, the pool would be the perfect yeah. place for that. Yeah. That's a great, I mean, that's what, because remember Matthew flipped his. Yeah. Uh, just accidentally standing over the side. He was using the restroom and it just, he lost yeah. his balance, flipped it over. So, and he didn't know how to get back in it. Yeah. So we brought it out here, put it in the pool. And showed him how to get it. That's when we was playing around and putting yeah. all three of us on the on the SS one oh seven. So this summer we'll probably have a, a video out there showing, you know, how to get up in the boat and, and, and all that. So um but I, I think that is safety is man, it's so big like say, you know, Brian and Christina's talking about um I've talked to so many different kayak shops and how it's so hard to even get boats right now because it's so many people buying a lot of people are not going on vacation. Yeah. They, they can't spend the money because either being laid off, didn't have the money because they couldn't work as many hours. Can't fly. Can't fly. Uh, I think you can do it now. Yeah, but, unless a lot of planes have been coming out of the airport yeah. from work. Well, I hear them from work. Hotels are kind of starting to open up. But, yeah. you know, people just don't ha- – they got to put their vacation at certain times, yeah. you know. And and with them getting back to work, it's hard. So everybody's just getting kayaks and going floating on the weekends. Yeah. So there's so many more people out there kayaking and – I mean, I've talked to several people here and there at different places, and you know they don't even know where to start. Yeah. They come in and like, uh, I, I'm new into kayaking, and this is what I want to do. And I'm like, all right, well, uh, what's your price point? You know, they'll tell you that, but then like, you know, like, well, here's a good life vest. Well, man, I can just go to Walmart. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, <laughs> you're gonna be in the water for a couple of hours. You want a comfortable life vest. I mean, you, you found that out. You went and bought you a nice England life vest. Yeah, for, the first for one I had was a cheaper one at Sports and Warehouse, and it was. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, so You're I went to Bass Pro and got me a better one. Yeah, and when you are sitting there, it's all up on your neck, or yeah. you can't, you just don't you can't move around. You yeah. don't have a lot of function functionality there. So, um, but yeah, that's key, man. When it gets in the kayak inside of things, you want to make sure you get spend a little extra money, get you get you a great life vest, a good life vest, and get you a good paddle. I always recommend bending branches. It's what I've used. Um, there's several other great brands out there. Uh, but price point wise, you know, you can get into the, the bending branches, you can get into aqua bonds, all that stuff. And some of these companies have their own paddles. Vibe has their own paddle. Feel free has their own paddles. Yeah. Uh, and they're great paddles to start with. And you just want to work your way up. The difference in pricing with paddles is just how light you want to go. And if it's a adjustable two piece, you know, all that, all that jazz. So take um, care of Casey. <clears throat> Casey's out. Yeah. Casey Reed. Yeah, no, Casey Watson. Mm. And Lee wants to know, when you mount the transom mount on a Boatify, do you recommend brace plate and hull of, of boat under the mount? Uh, so I'm assuming if he's on a Bonafide, I'm going to say 107, 127. I'm not sure if it's an RS, but if not, I don't – I got the big Garmin, which is a big – it's a long transducer. I didn't put no backing plate on it. I just used the factory stuff they had. Screwed it into the bottom and silicone, silicone, you know. And I never had no no leaks or anything like that. What's wrong, Chris? I see. I, th- I don't know if he means if he's mean tr- does he mean the depth finder or the the motor mount? Uh I don't know. Transom mount. I thought he was he talking about a graph. Are you talking about a graph or or a, or a motor? Oh, maybe I misunderstood. Maybe I misunderstood. I you. asked him. He'll he'll type it here. I got you. Yeah, maybe I misunderstood. Um, when it comes to the graphs, I think but, he means the motor, the the mount, the motor. Oh, oh, for the one, uh, yeah. So if it, I think it means if we do, do you put a plate under where you mount mount the motor? Oh, the oh, okay. No, well, it, yeah, on, motor. He said motor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Maybe I misunderstood you when you said it, Chris. Yeah. Um. Now it depends when you're when you're talking like one of our mounts. Um. Now you got our bona fide. I mean, our regular one objective mount, which is pretty much our easy mount line that we do. We're actually going to change the name to that because we did an easy mount for the 107, and then we did we called the one objective mount for the uh, like a universal mount for the 127. And no, we don't we don't run no um, plate under there. It's it runs right through the screw holes that come on standard with the 127. And then if you got a 107, 
that's all drillless mount as well, so you don't need nothing. So everything all right, Chris? Yeah, I'm gonna step out. Okay, all right. But uh, but no, I mean when it comes to when it comes to the mounts, no, I don't I don't run no base plates. Now if you got a mount like say with a universal mount, if you got a mount that there's nothing there factory wise and you have to drill holes, yes, you need I would put a base plate up under there and get you some stainless steel hardware with lock nuts and and do it that way. And like say also on one objective side, I, I don't like I mean I like pushing our stuff, but I don't want to cram it down people's throats but we got a new new product out i don't know if you guys have seen it it's our new through hole kit and what it is is it gives people that have don't have the ability to one either run steering cables through their boat or two like on the rs they have the they had stuff set up to where you could run the eyeballs down on the side and you could run cables to your pedals and you could use a rudder system um but but we like everything clean we like running everything through the hole so there's no no wires hanging out you, you know how fishing is sometimes you, you fish comes off and throws your bait into the side of them or you make a cast you hang into the side of them it's so much stuff to get hung up or in a tree or anything so we try to use the through hole kit it puts everything clean through the boat and like i said we did a video on that which is on our youtube you can check that out and it's just kind of showing the install of it and then what we use it for so I think it's perfect, perfect for like you say an RS. Uh, also, what makes them great too is on the vibe, where their rudder holes come out so far in the back. We don't like to run a motor that far out the back, or put that kind of angle in the cable because one it eats at the cable side um, where the holes where the cable comes through the holes, it can eat into that. So we don't we like everything to be f- flow out perfect from them and go into the motor. And there's no friction. So as you're steering, it's, it makes it easier to steer. There's no bends in the cable. You know, do no pulley stuff, any of that. So that's why we did the through-hole kit, um, just to help out people that either, one, wanted to move where their cables were, or two, wanted to put cables in a boat that actually wasn't made to do that. Now, it does make it difficult because some boats don't have access panels. So like uh there are bonafide we actually put another access panel under the seat so we could kind of get in there and run some of that uh on the 127 and some other odd end wiring that we were doing it made it a lot easier um for that so don't have chris back here yet he had to go take care of something so i just want to make sure everything's uh all right before we <laughs> go much further but anyways let's kind of I, I can't see all the questions right now chris is like i said he's the one who normally takes care of that but let's kind of talk a little bit about uh river fishing uh and kind of what I like setting up right now. Most people know, if you watch any of my videos, know there's pretty much only one bait that I honestly, truly love to throw. Every single time I go on a river, I've won a couple. I've won an event. I've placed good in a couple events, and I have caught so many big fish off of this. And it's just a whopper plopper. Everybody knows about the whopper plopper. Uh, this is in their bone color. Uh, I've actually changed it up to because Chris was whooping me one day, catching more fish and. And he was coming in behind me, catching more fish with the whopper plopper and the uh, perch color. So uh, that's a little something that, you know, I like to throw a little bit more of during the summertime when I'm catching. I, you know, I don't throw this on the lake. I do not throw a whopper plopper on Smith Mountain Lake. Some people catch them on there. I cannot catch a fish on Smith Mountain Lake with a whopper plopper. Just can't do it. But I can catch them like crazy on the river. So I always tell people you need to at least have one of these tied on. So first thing in the morning um if you're in the rapids all day they'll hit this all day long fishing rapids and all i do is i it's another rod that i love to throw this bait is the jason christie frog and rod i talked about that earlier when i was talking about throwing like bigger baits like this uh for the top water bite so this is something this is something i love to throw with braid uh and the reason why i do that is it gives you a better chance if you hang on hang into a muskie you got a better chance at getting this bait in back into the boat, getting the fish into the boat quicker with hopefully out wearing, wearing the muskie out too bad. I know a lot of people like cut their lines this time of year when they hang a muskie, uh, you know, teach your own on that. But I try to revive them best I can. I've worked with, I've worked with one muskie there a while back for like 45 minutes to an hour trying to get this fish revived back. He swam off. I hope everything he made it, but you know, I don't know, but uh, but that's like my that's one of my biggest baits right there. And then I also take a now you can take another again missile baits destroyer and flip it around trees when you kind of get in your calmer spots of the river when it's the hottest part of the day. You're trying to 
you know, you're getting some calm spots. You don't have a lot of rapids to throw at. Good lay downs. This right here is a great bait. Smallmouth will eat this bait up, and you'll catch a lot of largemouth in the river as well uh, with that. So, um, but getting in, then, you know, your Cinco. It's hard to beat a Cinco. We actually was throwing a bait. Me and Chris both was. I wish he was back in here. I thought we'd talk about it. Uh, it was the uh, Red Shad bait by uh, Rock River Baits. They're actually made in Virginia. Um, I think Brian and Christina and them at Journey Outdoors is a dealer for them as well. Um, but, yeah, so you can go check those baits out. It's like in a Red Shad color, and that's what we've been throwing on a shaky head. It's just a smaller Cinco that we've been throwing on a um, shaky head. And, I mean, it's been – Chris has caught some nice smallmouth off of it last year. So – but Chris is back in here. He's going to get make sure there's no questions. And then, um, but yeah, that like I say, that's my main setup. That's my main three baits. I don't carry many rods on a river. So, but uh, everything all good, man? Yeah. All right. Uh, check, just, I don't know. I can't see if anyone got Brandy any questions. wants to know if y'all working the working on the power pole trolling motor mounts for the more brands of kayak, like the Old Town in particular. Um, we get a lot of questions about the Old Town stuff. And, and at the moment, we're working with some people that send us some pictures, getting us some measurements. Uh, we like to do more with it, but I, I'm trying. I'm just trying to, you know, get a boat. That's the main thing. Like, you got to have have the boat there to kind of make it work. We like to test it. I hate. That's the biggest problem. I hate. Me and James both hate to make a mount and send it out and say, "Hey, let me know what you think," because we want to be able to work out most of the bugs before we send it, and then and then go from there. Because it's expensive sending that stuff back and forth, you know, to all over. But uh, but I think it would be good, too, to eventually get into some pro staff stuff with guys with different brands as well to help, you know, support that and, you know, make some different products for that. But like I say, we're into natives. We got some stuff that's going to come out for a couple other brands um, here soon. I'm hoping within about a month. Um, we got another boat sitting at the shop that we just picked up. I'm not going to name nothing off of that yet, but that's going to be, I think, a big a big deal with that motor mount yeah. as well. So. Nathan want to know, can you uh, say if it would fit on a bona fide or new could F12, the tackle organizer, uh, the tackle organizer for, I don't know. I'm trying to think the, you talk, I don't know if he's talking about the black pack or what he's talking about. Uh, I'm not sure on that. I hope I didn't miss up and say something. I don't think I did. Did I just say anything? But, uh, I don't know. Uh, that was before I, I guess right before, before, before I was side. I got you. Uh, now, what was the question again? Let me let me ask again. Can you say if it would fit on the bona fide or new canoe F twelve the tackle organizer? Oh, new canoe, new canoe. Uh, I don't know. I, some stuff that we're coming out with bona fide and native. We have nothing for new canoe yet. Um, that is a big deal. We'd love to get a new canoe and get some stuff on that. But the thing is with new canoe too. New canoe's got a lot of stuff already for their boats. So I think they already make a trolling motor mount for their boat. Um, now, granted, it ain't a trolling motor mount where I don't think you can use you can use a power pole with it. So it'd be great to kind of venture into that. But they got a new canoe's got a really great steer system. Yeah. With theirs, so I, I really like how their steer system is for all that. It's like a little lever up and down, helps turn the rudder, um, all that. So, uh, but yeah, we're working on some different brands. I know it's tough. You know, a lot of people are like, man, I, I want something for a Hobie. That has been their biggest one is a Hobie. A lot of people want to know when we're coming out with a motor mount for Hobie. Now, I'll tell you, it's it's in the works, but it's just so hard right now because we've got to be able to keep up with the products we got and shipping out. And then once we kind of get to this lull where we kind of slow a little bit, we can push to it. And we're actually looking at maybe getting some people in there to help us out a little bit because it's just booming. It's booming right now. So uh, just like the whole kayak industry. So yeah. what else we got going on, Chris? Uh, Walton says the Angler Ace is a great starter paddle. Angler, yes, Angler Ace is. Uh, Angler Ace is a good starter paddle. paddle. The Angler, uh, the Rise, it's a little bit heavier uh, paddle, but it's a good. It's also a good uh, starter paddle as well. And you can get some of these paddles in demand of like three, four hundred bucks. I mean, like some the, of them get, like the bending branches, wooden one. Yeah, yeah. Some of those get way on up here. And was that actually wood? Was that yeah, really yeah, wood? It's real wood. Because I was looking at that up there. It's at just New got River. like a coating over it. Yeah. We'd probably tear that all to pieces pushing off rocks oh, and yeah. stuff. I don't know how long it lasts with us, but I'm pretty hard on my paddle that I got right now. I think Scott Butcher uses one. He might. Like I see one of his TikTok videos where he was using that one. Yeah, he probably does, especially like with that Woodsman, because I think that's what. He, well, he's got a. It's not a Woodsman anymore. He's got the. Uh, what's the other color they come out with? The the Huntsman. 
I think that's what it is. Yeah, the camo looking one. Yeah, yeah. I think that's what he's using right now. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah, I'd be afraid I'd tear it up if it's wood. Well, like me, like fishing, like say shad spawn or fishing up on the bank, I sometimes I'll use that just to pull myself down yeah. into the rock. So, uh, and then beating lures out of rocks. I mean, yeah, so I mean, I would probably tear it all to pieces. But yeah, I mean, there is some really great paddles out there. There's some really great kayaks, like we were talking about earlier. You really just need to go into the store and pick them up. Yeah, make sure it's the right length, the main thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and your dealer, hopefully should know like hey you need a 240 to a 260 70 whatever it's all based on your height and how high you sit in your kayak yeah so um but like you what do you got a 260 260 didn't you say you think no 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 no, no, 250 yeah and you think you could probably go a little bit longer with yours so yeah 260 uh i think we got a little bit longer one at the shop i had to get you to try one time i got a good deal on it though i got it to play some pigeon forge yeah last summer that the one with the bona fide in the truck Yeah, uncle limbs what it called yeah yeah, that's a pretty cool looking yeah, they place. Got two bona fides. They got a cool hand blue and a, I forget the other color. The what do they call the red one? Uh, the first red one. Uh, that was the Hondo. Hondo. Was it the Hondo? Hon- yeah, it was the orange, orange one. one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. They had a cool hand blue and a. <clears throat> and a they had a Hondo and a pickup truck up on the top of a pole. That's their sign. I'm surprised bona fide got rid of that color. Like it was, a, it was about a colt. I always say it's like a colt falling on that color. It really was. Like it was so many people. Like, everybody's talking about, man, what, what color kayak should I get? And everybody's like, I'll do orange. Catches more fish, you know? <laughs> but I do like the green one they got now. The bright green one. Oh, the, um, I call it Citron through Crescent. I can't remember what they call that daggone color right now. Oh, man. Volt. Volt, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, I didn't like that color when it come out. I'll be honest with you. When I seen it, when they come out with it, the paddle sports show. If I was to get another one, it would be the <clears> red <throat> one or that one. Yeah. And the more I've seen it at a couple of different dealerships, dealers, you know, I'm like, man, I do like that color. Yeah. It kind of grows on you a little bit. Yeah. But, yeah, I wish they would do more. I wish the, um, what's it, the one that was the Fusion. I really wish that wasn't a limited edition color. I wish that was more of a standard color. Yeah. I like that boat. That's a nice, it's a nice color scheme. Kind of matches our stuff. So. Yeah. But uh, what else we got coming across there? Anything else? No. All right. Well, guys. Let's get in cri- the blue. Nathan likes the blue, and I think it was well, I don't know what they call that one. Palamin- Palamento. Pala- oh, Palmetto. Pal- yeah, pa- pal- Palamento. It's going to be Palmetto. called the, the Shelby, but then they have to change the name of it. Yeah, I don't know what caused all that. I guess Ford didn't like yeah, that too well. Yeah, I wouldn't. You know, not a Ford guy anyway, yeah. so he kind of I mean, pushed I, me away from it. I mean, car. if you really wanted to, you could put a Ford sticker on it and yeah. still call it your Ford, your Ford <laughs> kayak. Yeah, and then you're going to be fixing it all the time. I'm just kidding. Yeah. I'm just kidding, people. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, but no, so yeah. But we're like say, um, Chris. Before before I go into what I'm going to say, let's go ahead and pick a winner okay. for the RBT Custom Baits uh, right, Prize Pack. Let's see here. Chris is do 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 do. He's picking a winner. Doo-doo. Picking a winner. Pick a winner. I'm gonna close my eyes so I don't see Clay Brizendine. I hope I said your name right. Clay butchered your last name, but you won, man. Yeah, you won, Clay. <laughs> I can't say your last name, but you know who I'm talking about. You won. So, uh, Ron from RBT Custom Crankbaits, he'll either reach out to you or I'll reach out to you. We speak pretty pretty good on, on a regular yeah. basis. So, uh, just get your information. You can actually send it to me if you want. Just send it through uh, after the show. Send it uh, instant messenger there, uh, and then we'll get, get your information to Ron. Oh, I got it right. All right. Did you yeah, get it right? Yeah, that's all we use, Falcons. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's all. That's pretty much all we use. Was somebody asking what rods we use? Yeah, or, yeah. I love Falcons. I, I, I actually used to use uh, some carrot sticks for a while when they first come out, when they were actually pretty good, and then they went to. Now you can't even find them. Yeah, well, I mean, I could, I could see why. I mean, they, yeah. that, oh, it's like the very first ones are great, and then they all just started breaking, and you, and I just got tired of it. So. Yeah. Uh, I had some falcons within that time because I was at that period where I was trying new things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're a young buck and you just... Yeah. You're fishing just, wise people. Yeah, yeah, fishing wise. And that, come on, get your mind out of the gutter. Yeah. But uh, trying new things. Try, I was trying different reels. I've always used Abu Garcia, but I was using Quantum. Man, I had a whole plethora of... I still do. I, that's all I still use, Quantum. Yeah, you're a Quantum man. Yeah. I was looking through the picture the other day uh, that I took 
Did you see the one I shared? I had that old 1810. Yeah, I, I seen it on the side. I was like, man, he's still got that. That's still a workhorse. I still use it. I got two of them, actually. That's the newer one of the two. Yeah. Do they They don't even make that real no more. Do I don't they? know. That was the one that was uh, anti back, anti reverse. Yeah. The first one I had, I bought when I was probably 13, 14. It didn't have the anti reverse. That yeah. one does. I was scrolling. I was looking at that. I said, he's still got that thing. The 1810 MG. <laughs> Yeah, that's been a good reel. I used to have an old quad of iron. I don't know what happened to it. Well, I still got that one in my truck. Remember? We was looking at that. Yeah. I was thinking about using it for my cat. Well, that spinning room. reel that I just replaced, I had that since I was a kid. Yeah. I got the quantum throttle now. I, I'm trying to think if I got any. I did. I do have a spinning reel that was my Cardinal. Remember? It has the, like, the I rubber got, come off. Yeah, I still got the Cardinal, some, my Cardinal somewhere. I had two yeah. of them. Yeah, they're good reels. Yeah. And, and that's what I replaced it with. I replaced it with another. I don't spend a lot of money on spinning reels. I just don't. I don't either. Like the throttle, I think I paid like $60 for it. Yeah, that's about my limit. I, I got I got two of them. I got a 20 and a 30. I might would spend 100 bucks. But, you know, I just, I don't know. I catch so many. I mean, I, 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 the energies are nice, but I don't want to spend $160 yeah. on a spinning reel. Well, they got some nice Revos out that I like. Yeah. Spinner reel. And, and Shimano makes some really great uh, spinning reels. But I'm just like, man, I don't know. Like... I don't really have no issues with the ones I use. I hate to spend too much money. I'll spend a little bit more money on a bait caster. Yeah. Just because you're getting a, you know, a yeah, good deal. I ain't deal. bought no bait casters for a while. Yeah. I'm about due for a new one. Yeah. Last Honey, one I bought it's was uh, the... almost Father's Day, so I'm due for a new reel. Just throwing it out there. Yeah. I like the Revos. SX is in higher, but we're on a budget, so I'll, I'll take an SX. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Six, four to one. Actually, no. Let's do seven. So they got them at eight now, don't they? Yeah, they do got an eight. Actually, yeah, I'll take eight. So, honey, if you're listening, so you just cast it out one time and reel it twice. It's back in. Yeah, but I'm, man, it makes one heck of a Texas rig rod. Yeah, I mean, you know how many times you go out and, and, and fishing like the Rocky Bluffs and you're stair stepping them down in like 50, 60 foot of water. Yeah, and before you know it, they're coming at you. You know, so yeah. you got that that real speed to pick it up. So, uh, but yeah, is that somebody texting me? Oh, I was making uh, sure, but. Um, but anyways, uh, so what was the guy? What was the guy's name again? Clay that one? Brizendine. Clay Brizendine. Good job yeah. on that, Chris. I thought you butchered it. I he's, really he's, did. And he says, "I'm so pumped to try some of RBT stuff." Thanks for the giveaway, Ron, and one objector. Thank you, man. Thank, thank you, you for, for watching. Uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in. So, uh, like I say, I don't want to spill too much more of the beans with what's coming up with one objective. But uh, guys, we will be doing something with the storefront. Uh, we will be doing something with, uh, if you're in, want somebody to rig your boat, want us to rig your boat, we can set that up now and we do it. Um, but we're looking at more doing a full, full install area. You know what I mean? Like yeah. a, a storefront. People can come in and buy stuff from us on a regular basis. Um, cause I mean, we do, we got people that have messages like, man, I'd love to make the trip down there to see, see your shop. And I'm like, eh, hey, you don't want to come down right now. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big. And like, it's not that it's not that spectacular you know it's it's hot in there and you come down we're probably sweating like crazy and trying to get mounts done now is not a good time yeah. but uh but we are looking at doing something so we can get more people in there and and hang out and uh and hopefully maybe do a couple of shows live down there i don't know you know um but you How's know the internet down there um not good but you know we can make it work yeah. <laughs> do it from the phone yeah yeah i mean we plan on getting all that set up at the shop too, you know, so, uh, for speed, have better, faster internet. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we got a lot of stuff going, but like I say, right now we're a Crescent dealer. There's things in the works for other brands. Um, and yeah, paperwork signed. We got the other brands. I don't want to say much more about it right now. Uh, and we're hoping that the way the way everything is going in the kayak industry, it's just hard to get them right now. So I don't even want to say much about it until we got them you know yeah uh the crescents we we could put another order in of 20 boats and a couple more sups we, we can get a lot of questions about those that's the name of the boat or sup sup yeah yeah okay. sup plus okay so it's a it's a paddle board uh, One, a, they stand up on it basically yeah okay. uh, but it comes with a chair too oh okay so it's wider um and a lot of people fish the fly fishermen are loving this boat because yeah. it's so wide open you know um, and then people that, you know, like say, if you're going down and fishing the coast and you're fishing like a lot of the flats where well, you ain't having to go through the waves, you know, yeah. people are really liking that boat down there too. So, um, trying to work out some things with getting another, another boat in there from Crescent. I don't, I'm hoping that can go through, uh, cause we've had a lot of questions about it. So, um, trying, trying to work out some stuff with solo skiff. I don't know if we can get it or not. I don't know, but it's a pretty cool boat. Uh, I, 
it's one I would like to have, but I don't know how well it'll do around here. It, it would not do great in a river whatsoever. Oh, no. But it would do great maybe at the lake or something, you know. So, And you can put a gas motor on it. It's already got a mount on the back. But you can put a gas motor on On the stand-up one? No, on the, uh, well, I mean, it kind of is a stand-up, the solo skiff. The sup? No, you don't put a gas motor on Christina took the sup out this weekend. She says it's amazing. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a neat boat, man. It's a, it's a great boat. And, and like say, it's already got the four bolt pattern in the back. For like a, for like a power pole. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're going to be motorizing one of them dudes here soon. Oh man. <laughs> Throw the old one objective mount on the back of it, man. It's going to be rock and roll. <laughs> I bet you that boat would probably do pretty good. Yeah. I don't know how, I mean, it's a stable boat for a sub. It's a, it's probably not heavy either. Cause it's, you're, just, you're just standing on it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing about those though is, uh, they're, uh, what do they call them? Christina, I hope you can help me. They, they call me, uh, not a hybrid. Maybe that's what they call it. Something like that. Kind of boring. Oh. So it's more of a catamaran looking style, uh, hole in it. You know, it's not like just flat on the bottom. Like most, um, Chris says he has a two lakes sit in only any suggestions for one. He's got what? What, what is two it? Lakes. I have two lakes sit in only any, any, any suggestions for one sit in only. Yeah. Oh, he's got two kayaks. Or it says two, two lakes. Two lakes. He's looking for a set in kayak only? Yeah. Oh. Um there's a couple of different brands out there that's pretty good. She's in by the way, Christine said yes, yeah, a hybrid. Yes, a hybrid. That's what it was. But yeah, two lakes, sit in only. Um, I mean, feel free's got some ones out there that are what they call the G T ten point five, I think is what they called. Um, they're a nice sit in kayak. And there's a few other brands out there. That I know Old Town, they make a good, I mean, Old Town's been around for a long time, you know, and they make a good sit-in. But you also have, if you want a really stable sit-in kayak, is the Bonafide EX. It's a great little sit-in kayak. You got a nice wide open area you can put tackle in. And it comes with like your little couple, your little dash, the command center. Oh, man. Call it. So, and, that, and that, some of that, that can come out. Yeah. So it's got your cup holder. It's got a little dry box in there. Uh, and you, you got your feet rest and I mean it, it, but it's got a similar hole. Did I say that right? Similar, 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 similar hole to a one Oh seven and a one twenty seven and RS. Yeah. And it, the EX one twenty three is a great sit in too. Yeah. Christina says. Yeah. That's what I was, yeah. The EX. That's yeah. what, what did I call it? I did. I call it the EX. I just make sure I didn't call it something else. I thought you did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Cause I didn't want to make sure I call it something else, but yeah, the EX one twenty three so, by Bonafide. I don't know if I read Chris's question right. He has two lakes where they can only use sit-in kayaks. That's what it sounds like. Never heard of that. I ain't either. But I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. It could be. Or that he's just got two lakes, but all he wants is a sit-in. Yeah, well, maybe. that's true. But, but that's what I would I mean, me personally, I love the bona fides. And, and, and like Christina said, the EX. Yeah, I seen the first one the other day when we was out and about. Yeah. Yeah, he said yes. Oh, okay. No, no, that's, that's the first I've ever heard of a yeah. lake that only allows you to use sit in kayak. Never heard of it either. Learn something new every day. Yeah. I mean, I've heard of ki- you know lakes that you can only use kayaks yeah. or john boats, you know, with no motor. Yeah. But, yeah. Huh. That's pretty interesting. Didn't know that. Northern Illinois said they had a uh, Ascend FS10 and their feet fell asleep all the time in it. Got to try them all. That's, that one was a mistake. Yeah. It's, I think the Ascend is getting more into your your dick side of things like dick sporting goods and yeah. walmart and what's the mothers they sell uh the pelicans pelicans yeah yeah and i mean man if you're just getting in a boat you want to take into your yeah. pond it's probably all right but i wouldn't dick take sells them old towns too though right i don't know do they i think i've seen them in there before they might i don't know has this one in lynchburg shut down yet they're supposed to be opening know. one in the mall yeah they're opening it where uh where sears used to be yeah yeah they ripped all that out and yeah. then they're putting new building in so yeah Everybody's all except ex- like ticked off about it because it was like they kept talking about a new sporting goods store. Oh, it's store. in California, Chris says. Oh, oh, I got you. I got he you. He says California sucks. Yeah. So I guess they have a law of some lakes out in California. Yeah, they got some weird laws, man. Yeah. Yeah. I like to yeah. know what their justification behind that is. You know, seems like know. to me. Maybe they're trying to keep people having less stuff. And maybe you're cutting down a lot of the fishing crowd. I guess. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, they got some weird laws out there on yeah. different stuff. They don't like you using lead. What's that all about? I guess you have to buy all <laughs> tungsten. Yeah. <laughs> Once you spend that money. Yeah. But uh, but no. 
guys, I think we're going to about to wrap this up, man. I had a good time talking with everybody. I really did. Uh, it was nice just kind of answering questions. Just wanted to get back on here and talk with everybody. I know we've been in the dark for, what, three weeks now, Chris? It's been three weeks since yeah. we've done a show. Um, so, you know, we're trying to just, just want to get on here and talk with people and, and see what's going on. Uh, congratulations also to the winner for the RBT Custom Crankbaits uh, kit. And I will also want to thank Ron from RBT Custom Crankbaits for helping donate to this. Um, working with Yak Attack. Hopefully, maybe by the next show, we're going to be doing a Yak Attack giveaway. Uh, and maybe Ron might pitch in with that, too. I don't know. I Casey just, Reese says Dix does sell Old Town. Dix does, okay. Yeah. So, but, they don't, but they don't carry them very often. Yeah. It may have been the run-up when I saw them. I saw them in one of them. It wasn't like the big ones like he has, but it was just a... Like a basic, like basic, sit-in basic or old something. Town, yeah. yeah. I got you. Yeah, Chris Cable says, no touch water. There are reservoirs for drinking water. No touch water. Yeah. What the bejeez. So if you flip your boat over, you could be in big, big I trouble. Ain't get sued. They're going to come out there. Oh, you flipped your kayak over. You're going to jail. <laughs> yeah. Man, I ain't never, I mean, like here, you can't even fish a reservoir. Like the well, drinking reservoir, like Bedford County Reservoir. Well, you can in Lynchburg, can't you? Can't you fish peddler? Oh, yeah, you can't fish peddler. That's right. But Bedford don't want you fishing there. Uh-uh. No. no. But people sneak up here and trout fish. Well, yeah. I've heard. I talked to a guy. Where did I talk to this guy at? The other day. And oh, it was at, it was one of the other stores I went to. He was in there talking about he worked at Bedford, um, Bedford Reservoir, and how they used to allow people in there, but then the workers could just fish it. Yeah. And he's talking about how big a fish is in there. And yeah, I was they like, say there's some big trout in there because yeah. that water gets real cold. I think I mean, it's some big smallmouth too. I think it's stock sure smallmouth. Because it so. there used to be a trout pond upstream from it. Uh -huh. It's called Stony Creek Trout Pond. I don't know if it's still there or not. I don't know. pay to catch trout or whatever. Yeah. And I'm sure some of those fish probably made it in. Oh, that. I'm sure. That's like the otter. Yeah. I caught my biggest rainbow trout I ever caught out of the otter. And yeah. I mean, that's not a stocked, but I'm sure way on up yeah. somewhere in one of I those mean, creeks. Yeah, down there somehow. Yeah. So I was fishing with a little grub for horny hit chubs yeah. and all that stuff. So, but anyways, uh, guys, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Chris, we got anything on there for uh, we get out of here? I want to make sure we no, answer everybody's I don't questions. Anybody else's questions. Guys, I really appreciate you tuning in. Like I say, share this video. Uh, I like to try to get out there as much as we can and, and, and help people. We try to have a learning show, uh, 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 you know, teach people new techniques, teach people safety, teach people rigging. That's our whole point. Uh, we try not to – I mean, we'll cover some news, but yeah. most of the time it's, you know, it's technical or whatever we try to get into anyways. Nathan says Academy sells old towns as well. I've never been in an Academy. you never been in an Academy down in no. North Carolina? No. Oh man, you gotta go in there. Their H two O baits are awesome. The little crank baits and stuff. Yeah. I like those little baits. I mean, I remember seeing the place, the sign for it. Right yeah. there. Uh, they still carry the all star rods like you, we used to throw. Yeah, that's another old rod we used to. But we don't go there anymore. Yeah. But uh, but anyways, guys, we want to thank y'all for tuning in. I know we were sidetracked. We was talking about night fishing. We was talking about bat, uh, smallmouth fishing. I try to just cover some of the baits that I use because um, I know we don't talk about too too much of what I do or or we do on the water. We always listen from the guys that you know the pros and the and the kayak anglers so hope you enjoyed the show guys please check out all our sponsors they support us let's support them especially in this time with everything that's going on let's you know let's help support one another and uh guys we'll talk to you later y'all have a great week stay safe and put your life vest on before you step in that plastic boat and get on the river we'll talk to you later guys see you see you